follow. And I sat with a woman who runs a multi-billion dollar company. She could hardly follow it, so it's never going to be a popular movie. But it's a great movie because you understand that the uh, fraud in the housing bubble was exploited in a certain way. That's what you get to understand. And it's happening again. What they did was is they changed the name of the game from CDOs, credit default swaps. They invented BTOs, bespoke tranche opportunities, which is just Wall Street language. BTOs are bespoke tranche opportunities. What does it mean? The same thing as a CDO meant. They're back at it again. It's going to happen again. Everything that, you know, whatever goes up must come down. And I have to tell you that one of my advertisers, it sounds like an infomercial, unfortunately for you, it's true. Swiss America, my gold people, wrote a book called Don't Bank on It. And I gave out thousands of copies for free on this show. It tells you exactly what I'm talking about. So you should go to check out your book if you got it or go to them and get it again. It's going to happen again. That's why I'm talking about it. I'm trying to save you. And I'm talking about Madoff. I saw it last night. I loved it. Even though I generally don't like Richard Dreyfus, I've always kind of got an ick factor about him. He was great as Madoff because he's such a creep. He has that engaging, like, uncle smile that you want to like as he's conning people and ripping them off. This is the part I like. I never trusted guys like that. In fact, I detested them. I detested them with every, every, every strand of DNA in me, hated those kind of people. I went to high school with them. I went to junior high school with them. I went to elementary school with them. I ran away from them as far as I could get. I ran to the Fiji Islands to flee them. Don't get me started on those people, please. And he ripped everyone off around himself. So you say, well, God punished him. Oh, yeah, well, in a way, sure. He's in prison, even though well, he's in prison. One son died by committing suicide. The other son died of cancer. So you could say God punished him. But I say leave vengeance to God, not to man. Nevertheless, it's an interesting story. And if you were robbed by Madoff and you want to tell us about it, I'd like to hear about it right here on the Nun Cruise, Nun Trump Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Like sleepwalking. Cruise Trump. Trump Cruise. Cruise Trump. Why, I tell you, he said that about him, and I tell you, he really didn't say that about him. It was CNN who said this about them, and I, I got to talk about this for eight years now. I'm talking about Madoff's Ponzi scheme, the largest financial scam in U.S. history. Global impact. It gave us Obama, by the way. Is one of the things that gave us Obama. No, he didn't give us Obama, really. It followed Obama it, because it dominated headlines in 08, 09. But Obama did nothing really to stop it. He was part of the same machine. It was the other movie, The Big Short, that tells the real estate collapse story from 07. But it was 05 through 07. And that's why I'm talking about the Madoff scam because it's about to happen again. How many little Madoffs are out there right now running scams on you? What do you think? It can't happen again? You know, it's interesting. Before I play the trailer and take your calls and I'm having a good time, thank you. I saw an article entitled High Risk Investment That Brought Down the U.S. Economy Returns with a New Name. And it was, it was an article written by the far left, Think Progress, funded by George Soros. Normally you'd say I would dismiss it, but they're right. High Risk Investment That Brought Down the U.S. Economy Returns with a New Name. And I posted it on michaelsavage.com. And they write a great paragraph, well written. It says, when a restaurant fails a health code inspection, sometimes the easiest thing to do is close up shop, let people forget what happened, then slap a new sign on the door and reopen under a new name. That's essentially what the world's biggest banks are doing with a complex high-risk investment product that helped destroy the global economy less than eight years ago. Then they write this. Goodbye collateralized debt obligations, CDOs. Hello bespoke tranche opportunities, BTOs. And then they talk about the banks that are now selling bespoke tranche opportunities, which sales leapt from $5 billion in 2013 to $20 billion last year. Can you believe this? Do you know that in 2010, the total on paper value of every derivative contract worldwide, every derivative contract worldwide was $1.4 quadrillion, or 23 times the total economic output of the entire planet? And that's why I'm talking about it. To me, this is interesting. You talk about fiscal conservatism. 
then I have to agree, if I'm a fiscal conservative, with the far left who has a criticism of this. Is that simple? See, for us to dismiss everything that the left says is as foolish as them dismissing everything I say. They're idiots if they do that. If they, oh, I don't like Michael Savage. You don't listen to me, but you don't like me? That makes you a fool. Now, for you to say, therefore, that everything the far left says, or generally, by the way, it's garbage, classic, class warfare, race warfare, you name it, economic warfare, I get it. But this is 100% right. High-risk investment that brought down the U.S. economy returns with a new name. So that's what I'm talking about. Bernie Madoff, the collapse of the housing bubble. It's fascinating to me. It's fascinating to live through it again, and no one's doing anything about it. The same exact elements are in place for another collapse. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to happen right after a Republican is elected. As sure as I am sitting here, this is the game that's being played out. We've had eight years of a corrupt criminal Democrat called Barack Obama. That's the, that's the game plan. We're all fed up with him. We know what he is. And we're saying, yeah, we need a Republican. So we're going to get a Republican, whoever it is, and then the economy is going to blow out. And they'll blame it on the Republicans. It's exactly the way the game is played. We had eight years of the corrupt criminal Bumbler Bush. And in the last uh, four months of his regime, I was on this radio show. I had a radio show then, remember, for 21 years. Those who know me, I said, watch out for what's coming. I said, Bush is a fiscal socialist, and you haven't seen what he's going to do yet. And what happened was somewhat predictable. I saw it coming. It happened. Then we had Obama. Now we had eight years of this corrupt criminal organization. And he'll leave scot-free. Nothing will happen under his watch other than World War III, a slow burner on that one. We'll have a combination of an economic collapse and World War III if the wrong Republican is elected who attacks Russia. If the right Republican is elected, we might avoid both. But that's a separate story for right now. So let me play the trailer for Madoff because it was on uh, channel uh, ABC last night. The, the, the second part's tonight, which I can't wait for, with the commercials because I'm in a, I want to see Madoff go to jail. Let's hear it now. You want to know how to get people to trust you with their money? I'll tell you right now. You present it as an exclusive thing. Look. It's a close fund. Nothing on earth makes people want something more than telling them they can't have it. People give me their money and I make them richer than God. Madoff Securities is the world's largest Ponzi scheme. I'm a rainmaker. I make it rain. <laughs> I'm the vice president and all I do is hire the decorators. People are going to be destroyed. Lives are going to be destroyed with this thing. I have something to tell you. How much did you lose? Fifty billion dollars. Somebody turned me in. You've left us no choice. Us or him. If you want to save yourself, Mom, you let rotten jailery belong. Made off. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, for a TV series that which says a melodrama, it's a good one. And the characters are great. I even like him. I I like him. Uh, whatever his name is again. Uh, dry face. Normally, I can't stand the man, but he plays a good role because he's the type of individual I've detested my whole life, the type I ran away from in New York. Then you got Michael Rispoli as Frank DePascali. He's amazing. You, once you see Michael Rispoli, you'll recognize him. He's been in a lot of, like, uh, Sopranos. And then you got Frank Whaley as Harry Markopoulos. Forgive me for mispronouncing his Greek name, but he's, he's the hero of the show, Frank Whaley. He tried to blow the whistle on him. Features Charles Grodin and was uh, an ABC News chief correspondent, Brian Ross, is reporting from his book, The Madoff Chronicles. And that is the basis for this. And R Brian Ross is pretty good. So the whole thing's good. And there's an awful lot to be learned from it. And it's entertaining. And I'm having a good time. And thank God we're talking about something other than uh, New Hampshire, where the new motto under Bernie uh, and Hillary should be live free and get high. Yeah, that should be the motto of the Democrat Party in New Hampshire. Live free and get high. That's about it. So let's go to a quick caller or two. Mark on WABC in New York. What's on your mind, Mark? Yes, I uh, just wanted to um, let you know that uh, um, in the mid-'80s to about 1990, I worked for Madoff on the legitimate side of his business. And there were two uh, things in retrospect that 
made me scratch my head because it didn't make sense. And in, retros- in retrospect, I can see um, why I was confused. The first thing was um, when we moved to the Lipstick Building, uh, there was all- we were only on one floor. So the legitimate business and the Madoff business uh, were in the same trading area. And there were two trading platforms that everybody was told could only be used by Bernie Madoff. And in the year... Well, but, when, but Mark, hold on. When he went down, what happened to a guy like you? Or oh, you weren't there at that time? I, I left in the uh, early 90s. So actually... So you left, you left way before it all came down? Well, I, I left before the... Inve- I left before the time period of the investigation. But from what I understand, they... I believe he was doing this way back into the 70s, but they had That's what I'm reading now, is that this started in the 70s, so that would include when you were there, but you're saying you had no way to know it, but now you're looking on backwards and you say you you should have known it, right? Makes sense. Well, they did- Yeah, but, but do you agree, but Mark, as an insider with the Madoff firm, I don't mean an insider who did the scam, don't you agree with me that the government let him get away with it, the SEC, that they should have gone to prison for looking the other way? Were they, were they paid off? In your opinion, were some of these SEC people the, or the oversight groups at the accounting firms, weren't they involved in this conspiracy? Were they paid off? Well, it's hard to know for sure. Uh, um, one argument is there were a lot of um, novice investigators who were probably intimidate, intimidated by the man. Oh. Oh, so they got kids out of uh, Wharton or something who sat in the office with him and were aw- awestruck by him. But, but um, reviewing this, is, um, it's a fact that his banker in, through this whole period was J.P. J. P. Morgan Chase, and J.P. Morgan Chase was investing with him. But about six months prior to the FBI coming in um, with an indictment, they pulled all their money out. Now, I can't say with any kind of clarity that they knew, but it, that does seem very coincidental. Yeah, who, old Jamie Demon, a good friend of, uh, of Barack Obama? Yeah, well, I'm not sure who, who was involved with this, <laughs> but... Yeah, well, isn't she, isn't she, that a group, that bank was run by somebody? You know that leads us to Hillary Clinton. She got a six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar payment for one speech by Goldman Sachs. Do you know that? Uh, I knew she was getting heavy fees for most. Can you believe a six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar payment for a single speech, three speeches to Goldman Sachs? Uh, Mark, thank you. What I want to do now is play an interchange between Hillary Clinton to bring the bring this down to the political level here because it's all related to what we're watching going on right now. Last night at a CNN town hall in Derry, New Hampshire, uh, moderator Anderson uh, Anderson Cooper asked Hillary Clinton, did you have to be paid pl- the, the money? Listen to this interchange. Hillary gets flustered in her answer. It's an embarrassment to listen to this. Go ahead. But did you have to be paid $675,000? Well, I don't know. Um, that's what they offered. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, every secretary of state that I know has done that. But that's it's usually once they're office and not running for an office again. Well, I didn't know, known. to be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't committed to running. I didn't, I didn't know whether I you would or not. You didn't think you were going to run for president again? I, I didn't. I, you know, when I was secretary of state, several times I said, oh my you know, I, I think I'm done. Every secretary of state does it, and I didn't know I was going to run for the office. Do you accept that as an answer, as a Democrat? How can anyone vote for this? Woman, I don't understand it. And I jokingly said the motto of the Democrat Party in New Hampshire is live free and get high. I don't know, maybe Hillary has taken that motto to heart because nobody bought it. Even liberals have run away from her, which is why the crackpot Bernie Sanders is doing so well. It's not that they like him so much. It's that she is so corrupt that she stinks to high heaven. This is like a an individual that nobody can get behind except those who are going to benefit directly from a Clinton win. And so the young idealists who don't know any better, they generally have no idea what they're talking about. 
And that's the way the young are. They're, st they're foolish. They're not all stupid, but they're foolish. They haven't learned anything yet. They're rallying behind the maniac, 